Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Appearance. This is important to God. We should always want to have an appearance in light of His character. That people see us, not just what we say, how we appear, what we do, but also what we wear. I think it's highly significant that the priests were instructed to wear particular garments in order that they might have a a testimony as they served, as they carry out God's purposes. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Exodus. And now we're ready for the final portion of this 28th chapter, the book of Exodus and chapter 28. This whole chapter has been involved in the garments of the priests. Now, we focus in on the high priests last week with that breastplate and also with a certain turban or hat that he wore. There's going to be different uh, head covering for the regular priests. So look with me, as I said, to Exodus chapter 28, and we're going to begin with verse 31. Once more, God is speaking personally, directly to Moses, that he receives this instruction, and therefore he teaches it to those who are wise in the spirit, those who God has given the ability to serve him. So verse 31. And you shall make a me'il. Usually in modern Hebrew, a word me'il speaks of a coat. But here it's probably better translated with the word robe, the priestly robe. So once more. And you shall make a robe of the ephod, that, that vest. So the vest is a centerpiece. It is the foundational priestly garment. And we find that for it, there's going to be a robe. And when we look at this robe, we see something unique about it. First of all, all of it, not like the other various things that were comprised of several different materials, but this is an ma'il, the robe of the vest, the ephod, the robe of the ephod, all of it is techelet. All of it is that unique blue. And again, it is a material, it is a substance. And that substance is used for the construction of so many things in regard to the priest and the tabernacle. Verse 32. And it shall be, and it uses the word P, which is a mouth. But here, if you think, for example, of a undershirt. Now, we know that we have places for the arms to go through, but we also have that round piece in the middle of the undershirt for one's head. So what this me'il, this robe, is like, it is more than likely a rectangle, and it's folded over, but in the center, there's going to be a circle cut out, and that's called the mouth of the robe but it's simply for the head, and that's exactly what the text tells us. And it shall be for a mouth of its head, in its middle, so in the middle of this garment, and we see that it's, it's there on the side. And it shall be for its mouth all around, and it shall be made, and it uses this word for woven. Now, several other translations use a different word. Remember, we talked about the word choshev for a work of intelligence, one that requires thinking. Some Bibles also use this as woven. 
but this is not the case. It's this word that we see here, oreg. Our study center is on Rehov HaHorgim, which is the street of the weavers. It's this same word here. It's singular, but, but there it's in the plural. So I'm familiar with it quite well. So it's a woven work, and it says, as the, the mouth of the Tachra. Tachra, some will say the coat of mail. What is that? I wanted to do some research on this word. And when I did, and I relied heavily upon Rashi, he says that this me'il, and it's speaking about the head place, where the head goes through. It's made unique. And it's made on, on its side as a woven work. And then it says it's like the, the armor. The armor was put on. And it had two pieces and also a place for the head. So the same thing here. And it shall be to him in order that it's not uh, able to be torn. So it's made in a reinforced way. That's why it is woven. So the first priestly garment that we speak of tonight is the robe for the ephod, that, that special vest. Still speaking about this, this robe, it says, and you shall make concerning its, its margins. And that's literally what the word is. It's the same word if you're driving down a street and the street has shoulders to it. Or in Hebrew, we use that same word for margin. Probably here, what we're speaking about is the hem of that, that robe. And notice that hem it's him should have a uh, rimone techelet, that is pomegranates. But notice what it says here. These pomegranates of that same, same techelet, that blue material. So there's going to be a, a making of these, these decorations, which look like pomegranates. They are going to be made of blue. They're going to be made of purple. And they're going to be made of scarlet or crimson upon the margins or the hem of this robe all around. And there's also going to be golden bells in the midst all around. So when we look at the hem of this robe, it's going to have decorations. Decorations of pomegranates that are going to be constructed there reminding us of that fruit, and also bells of gold. And what else do we see here? Well, as we continue to read, look at verse 34. These bells of gold, they're also going to be a pomegranate that also has a, a golden bell, and also the pomegranate is going to be on the border or the hem of the robe all around so we see here that it's going to be decorated with these bells these bells are going to be shaped as pomegranates and bells of a normal type and there's also going to be these uh, pomegranates for decoration that we talked about in the first part of verse 33 and notice what it says at the end of this first section verse 35 and it shall come about concerning Aaron for him to serve. When he serves, it will be heard its sound or his sound. As he's working because of these bells, these pomegranate bells and also these bells of gold, they are going to make a sound as he works, does his service when he comes into the holy place before the Lord and also when he goes out. Now, the point here, according to most of the authorities, the best commentators, is this. He's coming into a place, and he should concentrate on his work. He's not there to gaze around. He's not there to delay. It's a holy place. And therefore, these bells ring as he works, as he moves, 
and he's not supposed to be detracted. Nothing's supposed to cause him to, to lose focus, to think about something else, to do something else, to go to a different place. If he does any of that, notice what it says, so that he will not die. The implication is, if Aaron enters into this holy place, now we're not speaking at this time of the Holy of Holies, but if he enters into the holy place, and certainly if this was true for the holy place, it's even more so for the most holy place, the Kodesh Kodeshim. And once more, he is supposed to do his work only for the purpose of why he came in, and when he's done, he's supposed to immediately leave, and if he does not, he will die. Verse 36. Interesting. When we speak about this robe, we're told what, what garment, this garment, what it's made of, this royal, or excuse me, this unique blue or turquoise. That's the color of the robe. What stands out is the hem that has these pomegranates and these bells of gold in order that they might make a sound as he labors. Now verse 36. And you shall make a tzitz. Now, the term tzitz is usually referred to as a head plate. We know, and we'll see this in a moment, there's the mitznefet. What's the mitznefet? Mitznefet is that, that hat or turban which only the high priest wears. We're going to see that normal priests, they wear a head covering as well. But the high priest, he has that mitznefet. And also upon his turban, his head covering, we see that there is a tzitz. And it says here that this tzitz, this head plate, is made of pure gold. And you shall engrave upon it the engraving of the, the signet. And this is that same type of engraving that was upon the signet ring. It shows authority. It's of that same, perhaps, uh, uh, writing style. And it says, what should be written there? Well, it tells us clearly. Kodesh Le'ashem. Holy to the Lord. Or that which is sanctified to the Lord. So we see something. This speaks of purpose. And we need to realize there's an inherent relationship between worship and the purposes of God. We worship God, and through this worship experience, we are given revelation. Things change in us and around us in order that we can carry out the purposes of God. Verse 37, and you shall set upon it, this is this, this head plate that's engraving with the phrase, Kadosh Le'ashem. It shall be, and we talked about this last week, we talked about how the breastplate was tied or fastened to the ephod, not with like it was up above. It was fastened with gold chains that were braided or woven, that type of pleated gold. But down below on the border, bottom portion of the breastplate, it was joined by by cords of Techelet. And the same thing here, the same phrase is used. Look carefully at verse 37. It says, and you shall set upon it the tzitz, this head plate, upon a thread or a cord of Techelet, that, that blue, that turquoise. And it shall be upon this head plate, shall be upon the mitznefet. Now here it is, this word, mitznefet, this turban. And it shall be contrasting, or, or the front of the, the mitzvah, it shall be, so it's at the front portion. So on, and we'll see in a moment, it gets even more detailed, upon the forehead. So the turban is placed upon the head, and that sits, that head plate, which has engraved on it, holy to the Lord. It's fastened to the turban by a... a Techelet cord, that blue or, or, or turquoise cord, and it's fastened in the front portion of that, that, that turban. Verse 38, 
and it shall come about that it's upon the forehead of Aaron when Aaron bears the iniquity of the sanctified things. Now, these things that are sanctified are probably the gifts that the people made. So he receives them, and maybe they were made in a state of, of impurity, with the wrong motivation or, or whatever that brings about something that is not uh, uh, kasher, not proper, not fit. But he's going to have this, this sits, this head plate that says, holy to the Lord, which sanctifies it. Now, the implication is just the presence of that purifies, it sanctifies all. Notice what the scripture says. Verse 38, again, it shall be upon his forehead, the forehead of Aaron, when Aaron uh, forgives or bears the iniquity of, of these holy things these sanctified things which the children of israel have sanctified for every gift of of their offering what they have sanctified it shall be upon his forehead always why to to bring that which is acceptable before the lord so that they are bringing these gifts and these gifts will be made acceptable before the Lord verse 39 now so far we've dealt with the the robe of the ephod the vest we've dealt with that sits that head plate that has engraven kadosh ladonai holy to the Lord we were told that it was fastened with a a turquoise or blue cord to the turban which sits upon his forehead And it's all for the purpose of whatever's offered, whatever is set apart for the purpose of God by the children of Israel. Even if these individuals were not holy or in a state of purity or even had the right motivations, this this head plate and that statement would, would purify, would bring about a reconciliation between the people, God, and his purpose and he would receive these gifts look now if you would to verse 39 now this is the word that you should make a checkered tunic of linen and you shall set set the mitznefet that turban also of linen and also the avnet, that is that seish that you shall make. And it should be, all of these things should be the work of embroidery. So these three things, the, the checkered tunic, it's of linen. Also you should make the mitznefet of also linen and also the sash that you should make. And it should be embroiled work. Verse 40. It says now, for the children of Aaron, you shall make also, you should make a tunic and you shall make for them sashes. And also, and here's this word, migvaot. This is a word for a head covering, but it's different. Migvaot is different than the word mitznefet. So the high priest, he's going to have that special turban mitznefet in hebrew with that head plate of gold that has engraved on it with the engraving of the singlet this phrase kadosh ladonai but the regular priest his sons they're going to have as it says here they're going to have a checkered tunic that checkered tunic is going to be there with the ephod they're also going to have if you keep reading they're going to have as well a a sash and also a head covering that that you are going to make for them and it's for honor the honoring god and splendor it also gives them a status where they are able to also serve god and the serving is for honoring god and for revealing his splendor Verse 41. 
Now, Moses is being told to do this, and notice what it says. God tells him, and you shall dress them. Moses. This shows, by Moses doing it, the importance of the work of the priests. How necessary and significant it was. So Moses is going to, what it says, verse 41, you shall dress them, Aaron your brother, and his sons with him. And not only should you dress them, but also you're going to anoint them. You anoint them, and there's an expression. Now, in my Bible, I highlighted this in a unique color because it stands out. Umileta et yadab, yadam. What does that mean? You fill their hand. Now, sometimes the word hand is, is related to a position, a work, a calling, and also in regard to all of this, authority. So when it says here, you fill their hand, it means you, and it's with this anointing, you give them authority. You show honor before the congregation of children of Israel, who these are, what their purpose is, why they have a significant role. So you shall sanctify them that they might serve me. So all of this stems from the fact that all of this work, the building and the constructing of the tabernacle, which we're going to review and talk more about in the weeks to come, Moses was just given the instructions for the tabernacle. No work has been done. And likewise, we're seeing the same thing that Moses is making these priestly garments in order that they can serve. But in reality, the priests are going to be ready before the tabernacle. And this is to show that the work is of the greatest significance. Verse 42. And make for them, still these instructions, make for them trousers of linen to cover the nakedness of their flesh from their waist unto their hips it shall be. So these are uh, what we would call trousers. They are an undergarment and they begin at the waist and they go down and we say the hips, but they probably go down either to just above the knee or just below the knee. So Moses is being instructed to have these priests wear all of these garments. And he says in verse 43, our last verse, And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come into the tent of the meeting or when they approach the altar to serve in the holy place that they will not bear iniquity and what die now again this is not the first time we've encountered this a few times and what god's word is telling us is that worship has great implications it can bring about blessings and revelation. It can draw someone closer to God, worship these things that are being done, these sacrifices and offerings and all that we're going to learn in the weeks to come. They have great implications. This is what's going to bring about forgiveness. We've seen this already for the children of Israel, that they might be reconciled unto God. But once more, if this work is done with a different mindset, not in God's ways, not according to his instruction, when it's done improperly, instead of mediating that which is good, what happens? It brings about death. And let me simply say that this is a most sobering point. Think about this. Worship. Now, we use that word to describe our congregational meetings where we're going to have a time of worship and i wonder if anyone ever thinks you know doing something wrong it is displeasing to god and in the past 
God slayed people for doing that. We have an example in the next book, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 10. We see that. So worship is of the utmost importance. Notice what this scripture says, verse verse 33. And they shall be on Aaron and upon his son. It's concerning them, all of these garments. When they enter into the tent of meeting, who are they meeting in this tent? The presence of God. When they come into the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to serve in the holy place or to serve in these holy things that they shall not uh, uh, bear transgression and die. So if they didn't have, and here's the key, if they didn't have the proper covering, if they didn't have the proper attire, if their appearance was not in accordance with what God said is appropriate, what would happen? Death. Now, I think that this should minimally cause us to think about something. That when we come before him, men, ladies, when we come to a place of worship, we should make sure that our attire is appropriate. And here's something that I believe is most displeasing to God. And that's when one comes to to minister, to teach a message, to lead worship, and their thoughts are not on how should I present myself to God, but what what message can my, my garment say to those who are coming to worship? Is this going to help me connect with them? Are they going to feel comfortable? Are they going to feel I'm one of them, a, a, a normal person and, and such, that we're, we're casual here? It's easy, no stress, no anxiety, just just come as you are. Well, that type of thinking cannot be supported in the word of God. It was not that the priest got together and said, what should our attire be? What do you think will make us popular among the children of Israel? I, I I don't see any of that in the scripture. No, everything was instructed by God that they might appear before him in a way that was appropriate, a way that was sanctified, in order that they would not die. And then notice how this chapter concludes. Look at the end of verse 43. Which means a eternal statute. Now, this word eternal, olam, can also be related to the concept of kingdom, that this is a kingdom status. This is a kingdom commandment, one that gives us insight about kingdom worship, how the kingdom functions. So we can translate it, a kingdom statute to him and to his seed. Now, notice the change. All the other times when we looked at to his Banav, Le Banav, Livnav, to his sons. We see that over and over. And suddenly there's a change here. Instead of the word sons, it says to his seed after him. And I believe this change of, of language is to share with us something broader. That this is the way that the seed, and that's what the word literally means, offspring, it's the word Zerah. And we talk about the seed of Abraham. It's a broad term. Not just perhaps speaking about the literal offsprings of Aaron, but those who come who are part of this this God-instructed worship. And these same principles that we learned here about coming in, not bearing nakedness, making sure that your flesh is, is, is covered, making sure that that. Everything that was done was done with the right mindset. If it wasn't, it needed to be atoned for. Remember that that head plate, sanctified of the Lord. All these things, not being sidetracked 
those bells, signifying come in for the purpose, do your work and leave. No interruption, no delay, no sidetrack. All of these are teaching us principles related to worship. And, and my, my great concern is that all too often, when we gather to worship, and this place of worship and that congregation and another house of worship, that these things are being violated and violated and violated. For the wrong purpose to be more focused upon man instead of focused upon God no when we look at this section concerning worship in the book of Exodus that begins in 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 chapter chapter 22 and continues on throughout the rest of this book almost half of it deals with instructions for worship and what book are we talking about? Well, you could say the book of Exodus, but I would also remind you that this book is called the book of redemption. And it should not be surprising to us that this nickname, the book of redemption, because it deals the first part with the Exodus from Egypt and how redemption always relates to worship. So if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, one of your utmost concerns is to worship God properly, to appear before Him in an appropriate way. Your attire, your thoughts, your actions, what's done, everything under His authority. Well, I'll close with that. Until next week, Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.